Hey, what is up, YouTube? It's Mickler Games from Team Brewpire here today, coming at you with my Cleefort deck profile. Now, I've been working on this deck for quite a while, you know, trying to figure out my perfect balance with the deck, you know, from for the meta. So, since this ban list is closing out, I'm going to be giving my end of ban list Cleefort deck that I've been using pretty much to this whole format. Um, never, never really had many problems with it. I mean. You guys did see the video of those bad replays that I have, well, that I had on dev, but, you know, that was just bad shuffling. I mean, it wasn't exactly like the deck is inconsistent, because the deck is very consistent and it works pretty good, and I love the deck. So let's get right on into it. We, of course, have our two copies of Cleefort Monolith, two copies of Cleefort Scout, three copies of Carrier, two copies of Disc, three copies of Helix, one Shell, and two Stealth with Book of Moon, two Dark Hole, two MSTs, two Duality, one Regeki, one Sacrifice, three Summoner's Art, three Upstart Goblin, with Bottomless, Compulse, Ring of Destruction, Skill Drain, Solemn Warning, three Soul Transition, one Torrential Tribute, one Vanity's Emptiness. On the side deck, Effect Veiler, three Maxi, three Shared Ride, three Imperial Iron Wall, and three Shadow Imprisoning Mirror. With on the extra deck, we have Abyss Dweller, Cairn Organ, uh, Castell, Dark Rebellion, Diamond Dire Wolf, Exit and Night, God Good Cowboy, Gaia Dragon, Draco Sack, Silent Hunter Arc, Ragna Zero, Big Eye, Volcasaurus, Strike Balancer, and Shark Fortress. So. I know some Cleefort players are playing Trampolinix. I decided not to play Trampolinix. Trampolinix does open options for your extra deck to be used. I do get that, but I felt like that Trampolinix oftentimes was kind of a weak spot in the deck, and you do lose a lot of draw power when you have Trampolinix in your Pendulum Zone instead of Cleefort Monolith. So the deck does really slow down on that basis. And a lot of people, you know, really enjoy playing the deck with Trampolinix over Monolith, but I just prefer Monolith because Monolith really is all about, you know, being able to maximize consistency, be able to maximize, you know, your plays and your options, and being able to maximize draw power, you know, for each thing you do. Because you get you get effects off when you tribute you know the monsters to tribute summon and then at the end of the turn you get rewarded for tribute summoning and getting those effects off by getting free draws so really honestly Cleefort Monolith is an amazing monster over Trampolinix I know some people who play both but I really just didn't find that there was you know much hope right now for Trampolinix just wasn't enjoying it and with Scout being limited to two the searchability of the deck did kinda of go down a little bit and the speed is a little bit slower so I felt like that it really just didn't need you know any kind of dead cards in hand because I've had so many games you know when I was trying it with Trampolinix where you get in hand it's just kind of like well shit I don't have a use for this <laughs> so that's one thing I just had to take out and like you can still do the same kind of effect like you know how Trampolinix you can bounce scout and then reactivate scout get another search you just do that with stealth, but in this case, like because you would target it to bounce it back, like they can't chain anything because stealth, like you can't chain to stealth. So you tribute a card, like you tribute your two cards, you get their effects off, like you tribute carrier and helix, and you get stealth effect to bounce your scout. They cannot respond to any of it at all, except with the solemn warning. But if it go, I mean, if it goes through, they can't respond to it. They can't do anything. So you get. You bounce their monster, you get a free pop, and you get to bounce your scout back to your hand, and then be able to reactivate it and search again, and they can't respond to it. So I felt like that was a really strong, really strong option that you know I actually started to do in the deck. I found that that it was a really good trick, and personally, it's just honestly one of the best strats that you can actually do with the deck. Um, I obviously have all my digital notes. Let's see this card here soul transition is absolutely amazing you like if you get like a really bad hand and you open one of these and just a Cleefort monster you can just normal summon the Cleefort monster soul transition on their turn like when they're going to do something like if you have a carrier on board and they go for like a monster combo you can go soul transition tribute the carrier you know get your draws and then carrier can go off and then bounce their monster or if they set back or on in phase you can soul transition 
pop one of their back row as well as get a plus two. Um, I was main decking the MSTs. Now, at first I had side decked MST because I didn't really feel like I needed a main deck, but right now with every deck running a lot of floodgates, I just kind of felt like that, you know, having main deck MST was really good to have considering, like, this deck doesn't really focus completely on back row destruction or being able to stop floodgates. So being able to get rid of those floodgates, you know, as it presents itself as a problem, like, you know, vanity, you know, vanity, this deck doesn't really care too much about vanity. But vanity can hurt sometimes, like when you want to go and like go off an OTK and try to win. You know they can get vanity. Um, lose one turn really hurts because Clay Fort monsters don't really have a lot of good defense, and well they don't have very good defense. And lose one turn would force them into defense. The only one that it ignores is Scout, but it really makes the deck really weak and vulnerable to being able to be attacked over. So it, it basically would rely us to normal summon rather than be able to special summon. So you can't really go off an OTK, you know, when they do have lose one turn on board. So that's another reason why I'm actually min decking the MST because a lot of decks right now this format are running a lot of floodgates. You got Ritual Beast, and you've got well, you've got Ritual Beast, and you've got Satellar Knights that are running a lot of floodgates. You've got Burning Abyss that are running floodgates. So them being able to main deck those cards really actually puts us at a significant disadvantage so I just felt like it was really good to do that um, I know a lot of people are playing that quick play spell card the monarch stormforth because it treats opponents monsters very good card I just preferably didn't feel like I needed it in any situation like you go up in a clee fort mirror match it's the worst thing you can have in the deck I mean the clee fort mirror is really bad with that Considering like if they get sacrifice off, you know, you yeah, you can tribute their monster for years, but they'll get, you know, pluses off it and then their tribute effect will kick in and bounce or pop your cards. So it's kinda it's kinda one of those things where it's not really good in the mirror match. I mean it's okay against you know well it's okay in like other games and stuff like that, like against like Burning Abyss. It's pretty good against that. It's pretty good against Teller Knight, being able to get over um, diamond pretty easily without much troubles, but I just I just felt like that the card you know wasn't really necessary. My options for the side deck uh, effect feeler because being able to negate effects is always key, and I don't really find that I ever actually side into this because you know Cleefort has an amazing job of being able to get around your opponent's deck anyway. I never really ever have to side into Effect Vealer, but I do have it because I know that like sometimes there may be a deck that I really need to stop effects in and I simply just can't because I don't get skill drain. So Effect Vealer is sometimes really nice, like if I know that I'm playing against a deck that has to start off with a certain effect monster combo to get into their plays, like I will side Effect Vealer. But aside from that, in the meta, I don't really side it. I mean I have it, but I don't really use it. Maxi, I use more like, if I play a match against, like, Sylvans or Burning Abyss, Maxi is your best friend. Honestly is. Uh, against Necroz, Shared Right is amazing, because if you can get this on... Like, if you can go first, and you can get this in your hand on the first turn, you know, they'll try to go for, like, Senju, and then you, like, you just chain to Senju Summon, or, like, Manju Summon, and then they, you know, search from that, and then they, you know, use Bryonac, or they use you know, Colossus, and they search from that, and they go, you know, they have to Kaleidoscope to get into Unicorn, and then, you know, they get a search off, you know, the, um, Herald going to the grave, and it's just like, like, against, against Necros, you will get at least a plus three or plus four draw. Like, if, if you go first and you get this, and then they go for their first turn, you will almost always get a plus four draw if you get this because they kind of have to do it if they actually want to win um iron wall right now ritual beast is one of the biggest decks right now it's one of the decks that's being played the most as well as like necros um imperial iron wall completely wrecks um spiritual beast because they can't go into their alties they can't do anything they pretty much just have to open into their msts like, if you, like, they won't expect Imperial Iron Wall to be played on them because a lot of decks in the meta right now, like, if you're playing against Necroz, Necroz certainly can't play it. Most people are expecting, like, Artifact Lancia, but they're not expecting Iron Wall, so Ritual Beast won't really side much game to you. Like, I mean, yeah, they'll probably side, like, Fairy Wind and stuff like that to get rid of your scouts. 
So I mean that that is always one potential threat that you do have to be careful of when you are playing Ironwall over Lancia, is is that you know if you're playing Klee's like I am, Fairy Wind and things like MST are a problem, in the side, um, and three Shadow Imprisoning Mirror because Shadows and Burning Abyss are a thing. You really honestly want to be able to stop them as much as possible. So, I have my side deck completely geared for meta, nothing else but meta. But it can it can be used pretty diversely, so that is a that is an option. Um, I don't think there's really anything else to actually cover. I don't I don't know if there's actually any other points that I wanted to bring up with you guys. Really don't know. Hmm. Just trying to think because I've I've already went over like all the combos and stuff. Well, not the combos. I mean, like everyone knows the combos of Cleaves. It's just like personal tech choices. Yeah, I think that actually, uh, I think that's about it, guys. So thank you for watching. Let me know what you guys think of this deck profile down below. Like I said, this is my deck list from this format's ban list. You know, the end of June before uh, the new July ban list starts. So I'm going to maybe have to make adjustments for the July ban list. I may not have to. I don't know. But... I figured I would just share with you guys my uh, end of the format list and you know see what you guys think about it. So subscribe to Team Bro Pirate today because we are amazing and we put a lot of effort into our content. And also go and check out my channel, Mechlord Games. The link will be in the description down below. So come on, check out my Yu-Gi-Oh videos.